it's time for more web novel ReZero content. I think we left off on this part. And I think that this part I misunderstood potentially. It's not necessarily Al being upset at only Ram. I think Rem is also included. But based on this reading, it, it did feel like it was pointed at Ram. Um, did we not do this part? Echidna could be the reason for Puck's immense power. Right, we talk about the oath stuff. This is the uh, Lugunikin prince that we saw in the extra cover pick where on the right side someone said that's Miklotov, but I, I doubt it. I, 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 I doubt it, but remember, Krush had an old childhood friend and Super admits to Rem that he had a crush on her. More web novel cope. Right? A lot of people say it doesn't count. It's the web novel. And here we go. Oh yeah, we did this one too, right? Rem successfully extracts a confession from Subaru. The more I think about it, the way that Rem treats Subaru in, in love, it kind of is how Subaru goes towards Amelia. Always trying to like request something, always trying to make the other party like indebted to some kind of reward. But yes, that's right, guys. Subaru said, I love you to Rem. Mm -hmm. Extracted that shit. Now, what is this? Extra loop in the web novel. Did we cover this part? Originally, there were three loops taking place after the White Whale battle. The first from Arc 3 chapter. Oh yeah, this is talking about, I think, the extra loops. Trying to save both Amelia and Rem at the same time, right? We talked about how these two are the most active Archbishop as well. Here we go. The Seat of Pride has been empty for centuries. And... I'm going to assume that the witch cult really started 400 years ago. So it's been about like 400, four centuries, I guess. And the Sin Archbishop of Wrath is mentioned. Not really important. When surmising that Subaru is the current generation's pride, being that the seat is vacant, Petrugus adds a detail in. The love of the witch for Subaru is so rich, right? The scent of the witch, right? The witch's miasma. For Subaru is so rich, even Wrath could be envious. So, this implies that of all the Archbishops, the Archbishop of Wrath is the most stankiest in terms of Witch's Miasma. That's what it seems like they're telling us. Later on in this section, Petrogius answers, adds that it has been centuries since the vacancy, that is, the seat of pride has been filled. So, it sounds like in the beginning, right, 400 years ago, after the Calamity, and people started to witch worship Satala, and the witch cult was created, it sounds like there was a pride before, right? Now, I'm not sure if this is a fact, but it makes it seem like there used to be one in the early days, and no longer it exists. And now, it's just gone now. Centuries should be changed to decades. And that's pretty significant information too, but long, long time ago, there was pride archbishops, but for whatever reason, it's been vacant. Who knows how that shit is taken care of, who knows how they died, but anytime Pride is mentioned, it is very interesting because it just seems like Subaru is this current generation's Pride, but I don't know, man. Oh, Sin Archbishop of Lust is mentioned. In the web novel, Betrugus also adds that Lust would be too envious of the love Subaru has received from the witch. And if they are envious, what would they do? Would they be respectful towards us? Would they be hostile saying, how could you possibly have it and kill us? I'm not sure. But sounds like Wrath would be envious, which implies that Wrath is very, very high in the Witch's Miasma magnitude. And Lust would be very jealous of that shit. The White Whale's presence was premeditated by Betrigus. Very important. Okay. When Subaru asks for clarifications on the trial, Betrigus begins talking about the highway being sealed by the whale, then directly mentions the mist as the method. This implies that the white whale having spawned near Flugel's tree was premeditated. So it sounds like they can control the whale, right? For sure they can. I mean, I would assume so. I've seen other Majus get controlled in the past, right? White whale. Gluttony. Can lie control it? I don't know, but it does imply that they are able to just like use the whale as they want. They just parked that shit in the highway. Yeah, Lyle also calls it a pet too, right? The ordeal 
as a test for the vessel's compatibility with the witch factors. Oh, okay, okay. Betrigus details that the ordeal's purpose is to check if the one being tested is a suitable vessel for a slash the witch factors. Okay. Okay, his line implies that his witch factor of sloth would be the first one to be tested for compatibility than the other archbishops. Wait a minute. I thought the compatibility was all about a suitable vessel for Satala, even though her flesh was not destroyed. The ordeal's purpose is to check for suitable vessels and their compatibilities with witch factors. He wants his own compatibility to be tested first, then the other archbishops. What does this really mean? In order to possess a body, the witch factor must be compatible with them? In order for Satala to be put in, is there multiple witch factors? I don't know where all the different witch factors are. I am assuming they're in the archbishops, right? We killed six witches. Satala killed six witches. The witch factors. Is it just... Testing? I mean, it, it is just saying testing, right? So they're preparing the body for Satala. It's not like they're trying to take the body away from her. It's more like, all right, let's use my witch factor as priority and other witch factors just to see how compatible this half-elf body could be for Satala. I think that makes sense, right? Sin archbishops should not interfere with each other. Oh, it looks like there's a rule. Betrigis, now in the body... Of the mad woman. Oh, this must be a different loop when uh, Ia might save us, right? Mentions that it is an unwritten rule among Sin Archbishops to not interfere with each other. Huh. They can, can they like help each other? Interfere sounds like you cannot fight each other. But could you like work together? Yeah, we kind of saw Regulus and Lai kind of work together, right? I mean... They happen to be at the same place and they were fighting the same enemy, but that's an interesting rule. Betrigus's authority had a second ability. Oh, okay, okay. So now it is proof that simply having one witch factor doesn't mean you have one authority. Well, even if you have one authority, there can be multiple abilities off of a single authority. Betrigus's authority of sloth had another ability. Yeah, I can definitely read this, man. Rough translation is slothful cancellation of others' actions activated by the voice command of be sloth. Can you tell someone to be sloth? A sort of shockwave that made people go nuts and be unable to move. However, certain individuals such as Subaru were able to resist it. It's like a debuff attack, huh? You say be sloth and other people start to fucking go mad. That's interesting. It would have been cool to see for sure. Could be only web novel stuff, but I don't know. Maybe this is hinting that in the future, right? There's potential for... Sing like, Subaru right now has the authority of Sloth, but we have not seen him actually use it just yet, right? And the witch factors will simply... Like, the authorities will adapt to the user's personality. So we'll be... It'll be very exciting to see exactly when he uses it, but there's potential for multiple abilities for each authority. I don't know. Episode 23. Here we go. Beatrice's memory was unaffected. Oh, okay. In the second loop, after the White Whale battle, the first loop is considered the cut loop. Subaru m manages to reach the mansion and convince everyone but Beatrice to escape. Once he reaches the library, he has a short talk with Beatrice, in which Beatrice questions Subaru about Rem. The magnitude of this is tremendous, because the blank letter implies that Rem is already erased, right? Yeah, which is written by Rem, not by Subaru, has reached the mansion. Shortly afterwards, the conversation breaks down, and Subaru is sent to the Arlen village via door crossing, which is Beatrice's like, portal ability. Partial translation of this chapter is performed by translation checking can be found here. What is this? <laughs> I'm not gonna read this shit, but interesting, okay. 
you don't think it's canon anymore but it is always interesting to think like how much you know these spirits could know because like puck one of them weirdest shit yeah and and this is well the puck stuff in the beginning had to do with the regression but we're specifically here talking about how rem has been erased name and memory yet biko mentions rem that's web novel specific right i mean it's very important this could imply what this implies that Biko also has a witch factor. It seems like beings associated with the witch can remember Rem, right? Subaru. He, he, he remembers Rem. Yo. Bro. We should ask Al. We should ask Al. Because he has a witch's miasma coming from him. And if he has some sort of connection with the witch, that could be like another test. Like, ask if, B, if it's simple. To just your associated witch, you have some sort of witch factor or something, right? And they know Rem, even though it got erased. Like that could be another like test to see some shit. But like, why does Subaru still remember Rem? It has to do with the association with Satala, right? But that's very interesting. This could imply that Biko has some sort of witch factor, or has some association with the witch. All right. Puck acts strangely. Upon meeting Betrigus and mentions he should not interfere in the ordeal by contract. Hmm. Now, I think that Puck knew Betrigus before. There's a couple hints given during their conversation of how old Betrigus is. And on top of that, in Frozen Bond, we seemingly we seemingly see a guy that looks like Betrigus but with much better skin care, right? The Amelia past stuff. I'm gonna assume Puck was existent back then and knows that Betrigus. If that was Betrigus, I'm not sure, but let's look at this. Upon meeting Betrigus, Puck begins acting strangely, babbling things about a contract, his purpose about the Saint Archbishops of the Witches Cult, pushing the ordeal onto people. Echidna's name is also spoken by him. He also mentions that he's forced by his contract to stay out of the ordeal. What? So. There is a contract for Betrigus. This is not Puck's contract. This is Betrigus's contracts? I don't... The, 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 the wording here is confusing, right? Puck acts strange upon meeting Betrigus and mentions he should not interfere in the ordeal by contract. Who is he in this context? It could be both Puck or Betrigus. You know what I mean? The pronoun here is kind of weird. But um, if it's Puck, then this simply talks about the Puck contract with, you know, the oath with Echidna, right? All about how interference, excessive interference by helping out Amelia is bad and how this ordeal could possibly have to do with that. Or maybe it's a separate thing. Because it's this contract here, not a fucking oath. So let's assume that this is Puck's, right? This is Puck's contract, right? Echidna's name is also spoken by him because we know that in Frozen Bond, Echidna and Puck, they have a deal. He also mentions that he's forced by his contract to stay out of the ordeal. But given that he aids Amelia in her fight against Betrigus in the anime, the light novel, this final tidbit may have been retconned entirely. Well, it's all about the excessive interference, right? I thought the excessive interference is the punishment that Puck gets by forgetting his memories and shit, which presumably happened in the past because Puck finds Amelia in Frozen Bond much after the whole Berserk Frozen situation, right? And I'm assuming the reason Puck right now is this AFK in the Sanctuary is simply due to his extreme interference and trying to just wait out some sort of cooldown on a bar and some sort of meter of the excessive interference shit. I don't know. That's interesting though. Oh, Shadow Garden scene. Okay, another Shadow Garden scene incoming. After his assisted suicide undertaken by Julius. Okay, this is the heroic run. Oh, this is the most heroic run of Natsuki Subaru. Okay, after uh, undertaken by Julius in the light novel anime, Death at the Hand of Betrigus, Subaru finds himself in the dark ethereal realm and meets the Shadow Woman again. Feeling intense love for her again, right? Love for her. Remember, this is love for her. Hearing the words, I love you more, more, multiple times. Now, what Annie you said today kind of throws me off. Alright, we should read this. How long is this shit? Maybe I should farm this in a different video. Maybe, I don't know, this is kind of important. I'm like, 
How do I make the most out of this? Could this could this itself be a separate video? <laughs> I don't know. But hey, let's let's not nah, let's 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 just include it in this one. Let's watch it. So this has to do with the narration of the scene, right? Talking about the Shadow Garden scene. So let's look at it. Um, this is Subaru and Julius Art, right? Using neck to fight Betrigus, but here we go. Prologue. Restart. Darkness. Everything itself is black. Thrown into this world, he lost his sense of direction. And he felt as if he was drifting in water. He couldn't move his body, he couldn't feel his limbs. He couldn't even trust his eyes or ears to function. His consciousness was faint. It's just like when Satella consumed him with the darkness in the most recent episode 10 in season 2. His consciousness was faint. His thoughts were hazy as if they were spilling out of his brain. Where am I? Who am I? What happened to have caused this? Those were the only questions to surface as he floated and swayed in the darkness. I love you. In the darkness, even in the darkness, his heart had felt that voice strongly, dumping his eardrums that were not there, throbbing his heart that should have not be there, even touching his soul, of which he was unsure of its existence. The voice reached out to him directly. His heart was swept away by those crazy emotions and mourned. It sounded terribly fragile, heart-wrenching, wrenching, and filled with unbearable loneliness. Its affection, so seared into its soul, seemed to have made it strange. Had I hands, I would touch the owner of that voice. Who's talking right now? Had I a mouth, I would call out the name of that voice. I think this is Subaru. Had I arms, I would like to have held the owner of that voice. Had I legs, I would have rushed to the side of the owner of that voice. Had I a body, I would be determined to never leave the owner of that voice alone. So are these the subconscious? Because remember, what is the theory right now? The theory is that potentially Natsuki Subaru is maybe a reincarnation or someone that resembles Satala's past lover that used to exist 400 plus years ago, but somehow died due to some fucked up thing that the world did to him. Therefore, Satala consumed all the witches for power and destroyed half of it out of wrath is what I'm assuming. And if we consider the subconsciousness that could be from the reincarnation, I don't know. Like his indescribable love, he doesn't know her, right? To us, the audience, Subaru has no idea who Satala is. Yet, there are these subconscious feelings that constantly just returns, especially in these shadow garden situations. But Mr. Anonymous recently had a video where he talked about how it was almost forced out of him, as in the subconscious, the, the things that we deem to be subconscious feelings, this love for Satala, is actually just artificial, created by Satala. I don't know. All of it could not come true. He was lacking a hand, a mouth, an arm, a leg, or a body to do such things. Same feelings. No. It is even more passionate. When nurtured, those emotions grew several times more. His love soon became sins. Oh. Sloth, for being able to un unable to wipe away her tears of sorrow. Hey, we were not slothful, huh? In the episode 10 Shadow Garden moment, right? With Satala, where Echidna is, you know, meddling with Petra's handkerchief saved us. Subaru did wipe away the tear. Because at this point, we didn't have the witch factor of Sloth. But in season 2... We do have the Witch Factor of Sloth. Therefore, we were able to do this. You know what I'm saying? I think I'm incredibly reaching right now. I'm... I'm am I cooking or am I <laughs> just connecting some pattern of behavior that has no meaning? It's to think about it. Like, the, the act... <laughs> I don't know. Because, like, what's the difference, right? We, we literally did that. And this might have been the best time to actually read this passage because literally the last video that we watched, last episode we watched, last episode, right? Like last episode yesterday was exactly the scene. Like he did this shit. He, he wiped her away tears and he said, I'll save you. So the only difference between Shadow Garden at this point in season one versus where we're at now, season two, episode 10, is the witch factor. So I'm going to assume that because we have it, we did this.
Now let's apply that concept and try to think about all this other shit too. Lust. For wanting to reunite and become one with each other. Gluttony. For wanting to consume and possess everything. Greed. For seeking love, demanding it, and taking it all. Wrath. At the unreasonableness and the absurdity disallowing it. And pride. Despising everyone and everything except for her. And envy. Simply at the world that surrounds the lovely girl. So... What does this mean here? Simply at the world that surrounds the lovely girl. I think this is a sentence carried on after this, right? Despising you. Simply at the world that surrounds the lovely girl. Because what is the world that surrounds this lovely girl? Shadow Garden, right? And the reason I'm bringing this up is because I have a schizo theory that in the first episode in the loot cellar when they died, right? Subaru made the claim that I will save you no matter what. And I'm assuming at that point, Satella showed up and then gave him the regression powers. But at that moment, we were in a shadow realm where she created some sort of pact, some sort of oath, I don't know, right? That prevents us from having those memories. But maybe at that point is when the witch factor of envy was given to us. Therefore, we have the authority of envy known as re uh, return by death, right? If we assume the pattern of behavior where you have a witch factor, then you're going to actually do this shit. Because he did wipe the tears away, right? This, simply at the world that surrounds the lovely girl, is the world right now talking about Shadow Garden. And therefore, because we have the witch factor of envy, in my schizo theory, is the reason why we are able to be in Shadow Garden, right? Maybe I'm reaching, but I'm just trying to take what made sense here and apply it to here. And maybe think that Subaru has multiple witch factors right now. I don't know. Aware of it. He had overwhelmed the world, which was covered in darkness of emotions. It was filled with love. Suddenly, the space which supposedly had nothing contorted. Time which was irreversible had turned back, returned by death. He came to an understanding. He understood that it was starting again. A light was born at the end of the darkness, and if he walked towards it, the world would begin once again. I love you. So this is basically him, how he like, restarts the loop, right? Because, you know, you gotta go to the light of the born in darkness, and you gotta walk towards it, and the world begins once again. And a very interesting thing is how, those repeated mentions of how like each loop, when he dies, the moment that he regresses, it's like one smooth pass. But this shadow garden happens in between. But it has... It's like a frozen moment in time. That's why it feels... And, and we forget that shit, I think, right? I don't know. I'm, I, I, I don't know, man. But that's interesting. Yeah, it, it is some sort of like limbo, some sort of different... It's, it's a shadow garden, right? Before each loops, but... We don't always go there. Sometimes we go there. Turn your back against the voice and walk. I want to turn around. But I mustn't turn around. But someday, I will surely take that hand. I love you, says Satala again. Natsuki Subaru continued on until the end, while the loving voice kept calling out to him. What a mystery, man. What a mystery. These Shadow Garden moments are so important, right? It doesn't happen always. Sometimes it happens. At the end of episode 15, when Puck cut her head off and says Nemure, right? There was a Shadow Garden moment where, again, we felt this unexplainable love towards Satala. And how does it make sense that he has this love, right? Because it's a subconscious, because he's a reincarnation, or somehow they've actually spent a lot of time together, but they forgot the memories? I don't know. But slowly but surely, we're piecing some stuff together, right? Yeah. Like, is there a pattern of behavior between the heroic death and the 15 death? I don't think so, right? It kind of seems arbitrary of when the Shadow Garden moments happen. It's not as... Like, it was a pretty cool death, but is there like a specific thing that we can point out? I, I don't know, but this part is the most interesting one. Because we specifically wiped her tears away. And now we have the Witch Factor slot, but we didn't have it in Season 1. But this could not be, like, a rule. It could simply be a nice little Easter egg. A nice little... You know... Like, oh, you paid attention to this. Like, it doesn't have actual, you know, meaning to the plot. 
it's just, you know, I mentioned this before in Season 2, I made Super Rock, she wiped Tear away, and that's all there is to it. So we might be just reaching too deep into things, but I still want to believe that he has this from the initial encounter with Satala in the first loop, where we don't see any of that shit, right? And I'm assuming that the memories got erased, just like how Echidna erases our memories after giving us the powers. And specifically because Echidna mentions that we have an existing pact or something before Echidna made one with us. It makes me just really believe that we have this Witch Factor and this one too. And I think that'll do it for this video's worth of cut content. We'll continue with episode 25 next time.